Also, thanks for taking your time to share your um, uh, experiences in a, in a, in a short um, moment with us. We really uh, found it very inspiring to understand how your model is maybe uh, very much affecting higher education institutions. From your uh, perspective, how do you think uh, universities in the 21st centuries can uh, apply your approach and what is um, uh, what is it that you call transformational literacy in this regard? Okay, so um, I think it's, uh, it's really uh, whether or not uh, theory U is relevant for universities really um, depends on the intention, I think, that um, university leadership and you know members of universities have right and I would say if uh, the intention is uh, to reinvent the idea of the university uh, in the context of the 21st century then it's very relevant and if that's not the intention it's not relevant so let me explain so I think uh, when you look into the uh, history of the uh, uh, idea of the university right so there's like the classical idea kind of the unity of uh, research and teaching and then of course we moved later on towards uh, the unity of research teaching and practice kind of becoming more practical and skills focus uh, for society but that's not enough today Today we face, we live in a moment of disruption where basically the old civilizational model that our economy is operating on is no longer sustainable. Kind of, so uh, that means it has to change. We know it from climate change. We know it from the SDG framework. That's uh, our globally adopted framework that we have a decade to really decarbonize the economy for a massive transformation uh, uh, of the economy and also of uh, you know, our educational system. So I think if we really take serious this um, moment of disruption we live in and the transformation that's necessary in the next decade and the transformation that regardless what we do, kind of the next generation of leaders, today's students will face in their lifetime, kind of in their kind of life and in their career, uh, what we need to do to live up to our responsibility is to uh, build a transformation literacy that maybe is the most important uh, capacity that we can give uh, today's student generations in order to address and live up to and face the challenges of the next decades uh, to come. And uh, what I mean with transformation literacy is really the capacity to uh, apply systems thinking, which m means moving from the systems to the root issues and addressing these root issues. And so I could go into a, a, a lot more detail there, which we just had in our discussion, but I would basically say what it means on a university level is that we need to open up the universities, right? It's not good enough to train people for jobs that when they are graduating no longer exist in society because they are already automated. What we need to do is to create learning environments that allow uh, uh, our learners and students kind of to, 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 uh, to develop the capacity of uh, connecting with uh, moments of you know, situations of systemic disruption and to become a co-shaper of emerging future possibilities. That's something that can be learned. What's necessary for that are social technologies. We have been developing them. We have shown through ULAB that they can be scaled on a mass scale, kind of that you can really make them accessible. But it requires new learning infrastructures, right? It requires universities to open up to the environment, to not only the companies that are surrounding the company, uh, the um, universities, but also to the uh, SDG-related challenges that we face in all our communities today. And that's where, you know, basically the shorthand for the new uh, infrastructure for learning is putting students and learners into the driver's seat of change, right? So that's kind of the, the principle of action learning. And then you wrap the learning environments around these initiatives. I think that's where we need to learn. It's already existing to, to some degree in, a, in many uh, institutions of um, education and higher education, but not nearly to the degree that's necessary today. Just one uh, aspect, if you allow me. Um, when you talk about the collective 
necessity that you not just learn as an individual but as an institution in the end as a society um, this Bildungsprozess which basically means that you are more aware of yourself and the world around you how can you from your experience see that in the higher institution as a as a strong dynamic maybe strategic process um, successfully happening well you mentioned Bildung right the German word Bildung and in fact it's a very interesting concept because it goes back to uh, an experiment that started actually by, I think it was three people. Uh, and like then a radical experiment at the University of Jena, right? Uh, what today is the Schiller University. And the three people to the degree that I remember that right is Goethe, right? Kind of um, who was uh, in the, um, you know, the educational minister and then kind of um, that whoever kind of the uh, the prince was or kind of the the um, uh, of that um, uh, uh, entity and then one funder kind of who came somewhere from from northern germany so basically three people deciding okay uh, with all these changes going on let's create one place one university where we bring kind of some of the more where we create more degrees of freedom so more autonomy for the university and we bring in all the innovators together so that's kind of where they put all, you know, to people today we know as German idealists kind of and who came up with a concept of Bildung, that's much more what, to, what I would call uh, based on vertical literacy kind of, um, or what today would be called here next door at like the Harvard Ed School would be called adult learning, right? And it's basically a learning uh, that's based on a shift in, uh, in mindset or a shift of awareness and consciousness. Some, something that I often call a shift from ecosystem awareness to ecosystem awareness, kind of to, to a more holistic view of the situation you're in. So that's kind of the, the Bildungs concept was never just focusing on skills. It was kind of based on a vertical development, right? You, you see that in the aesthetic letters of Schiller. You see that in all these, um, the main leading thinkers of that time had you know, a way of tapping into the deeper essence of our human journey. And that innovation, the, the concept of Bildung, by Denmark, by the Danish innovators who turned that into the folk high school, was made available to the general population and led to the miracle of the Nordic uh, uh, economies in the Nordic countries. And I think that's very much an inspiration for us today. Uh, and at the same time, it was the inspiration for Humboldt to create what we know nowadays as the modern university. So, in, in a sense, for the 21st century, uh, it seems not sufficient to be quick enough to facilitate this, uh, what, we, what you call the transformational literacy, right? So, um, in a nutshell, what is it that German institutions need to do to, to really find a approach that is uh, working nowadays? I think, um, so, so first one, day, one word to Humboldt and kind of, so yes, he was a, a, an amazing innovator, but when we look in retrospect, in hindsight, um, onto the German system uh, through the Nordic perspective, you see very clearly the limitation of Germany, which is you keep these concepts for the elites and you're not making it available to the general population, which really was done with the folk high school. So that was the innovation really. So, and I think that's uh, maybe an interesting, so uh, the question today is this kind of spirit that, so what does the positive spirit of the German concept of Bildung mean today if we apply it to today's situation? And I would say it needs to be a lot more uh, situated in the global challenges, the kind of the challenges of sustainability, of inclusion, and of moving from really also uh, dealing with technology in a new way. Kind of the whole kind of trans societal transformation that we are in, I think students need to be a, not only the victim, but the co-shapers kind of of that uh, development. It needs to be situated in these challenges, and that's one thing. And the other thing is, the change makers of today, particularly the young generation, but everyone really, needs to be equipped with tools, with tools that allow us 
that uh, you know, social, so I call them awareness-based social technologies, tools that allow us to turn a group, a stakeholder group that's just um, fighting against each other into a situation where we access our co-creativity. And that challenge, just about every leader, every organization has today, and that's something that can be learned where methods and tools can make a big difference. And that's what I mean with vertical literacy, right? It's a literacy, we need the old literacy still, but we also need the vertical literacy that allows us to move in a methodical way from the me to the we, or from the ego to the ecosystem perspective. And just uh, summarizing or uh, ending, um, you, you had a wonderful uh, definition of leadership that kind of encapsulates uh, what is it that people uh, in these positions really need to maybe be aware of. Do you? Well, I, I vaguely remember that. I think I said, so, so there's like, um, uh, you know, when you look at the big challenges today, um, what are most people, uh, how are they relating uh, to these challenges? So take climate change, right? And of course, it's very clear what most people do, including ourselves, right, much of the time, which is we are in total denial. Right? So we are really in denial of the data. And then, okay, so that's stage one. Stage two is you focus on the data. And what happens, what's the next thing that happens? Depression, right? We move into the deep depression because it's, uh, it, it just looks so um, depressing, right? You cannot be not depressed if you consider the real data, right? Like about climate change around the SDGs. So that's number two, right? But that's not leadership. That's just kind of being a victim, right? Leadership is to move beyond that, right? And to look into your own area and sphere of influence. And um, one of the core principles of Theory U is the future is already here. It's already here, it's not out there. It's already here, but it's like unevenly distributed, which means we need to go to the periphery of our systems in order to open up to uh, those pockets of innovators, kind of where the future is already being prototyped today. We need to attend to them, we need to partner with them, we need to uh, you know, you know, empower these ecosystems and help them to evolve. So, that's, um, so leadership in that regard is move beyond denial and depression and uh, identify where the future that we intend to bring into reality is already embodied today and then support these seeds. I think it's a very methodical process. And uh, the surprising, uh, finding is if you really focus your energy on that, you amplify kind of these positive stories. Because from a leadership perspective, I would say energy follows attention, right? Wherever you put your attention as a leader, that's where the energy goes, not only your own, but also from the people around you. So, and that's why kind of this definition of leadership, which is an attention-based view, is really, I think, at, at, at the core of uh, uh, current uh, state-of-the-art systems thinking. We take that with us. Thanks a lot, uh, right. Otto, and all the best for this uh, visionary uh, work that you do and share with us. All right, thank you so much.